Hey girl, it's me, Miska Dover, author and singleness coach. Welcome back to your one-stop shop for everything singleness, dating, and relationships. Today, you guys, we are going to be talking about the lies, okay? The lies of the purity movement. I was inspired by this post, and we're going to get into this video because the purity movement, I'm like, throw the whole thing away. And I don't want to do that. So before I throw it all away, I'm just going to fill in a little bit of the blanks for you. And without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> So you guys, I was doing my daily scrolling upon the Instagram and stopped on this post from Mrs. Kev on stage that I will reference here. And this post, you guys, just spoke to my spirit, okay? I was like, yes, it is giving everything that needs to be given. And as I read it, I was like, you know what? I should make a video about this because a lot of the things that were on this post, I have struggled with personally, okay? So let's get into it. The first lie that this purity movement gave unto me is that my sex life would be this perfect thing as soon as I transitioned into marriage. Saving yourself for marriage, although it is a good thing, a preferred thing, a God thing, does not mean that it will be a perfect thing when the time comes. If you're familiar with my testimony, you will know that I was one that let pop culture, movies, pornography, friends, and all of the like, influence the way that I thought about sex. And all of those things can be very misleading because what works for one may not work for you. You can especially see this in chick flicks where we're following this main couple as their relationship just buds and blossoms. And then they have their first sexual encounter and then fireworks go off and everything was perfect and they pressed all the right buttons for each other and it was just this great experience but that can be misleading if you haven't had a real spirit-led conversation with someone regarding sex now granted they are trying to sell a story to a consumer however if that consumer is refraining from sex and hasn't had a real spirit-led conversation with anyone regarding sex, you can start to take on the things that are suggested to you and believe that, okay, this is mine for the taking. When it's my turn, this is how it's supposed to happen. This is the blueprint. Then there's also this, I did everything right, so everything is going to fall into place and go well for me mentality that comes with abstaining. When that is not true either and when you finally do have that intimate encounter with your spouse this can cause a lot of confusion and frustration when you see like okay the same fireworks that went off for sis they ain't go off for me okay what's going on am i broke is he broken what is going on lord okay feel me and this is not to discourage you but it is to educate you because a lot of times in this christian walk we get a lot of do not this, do not that, do not this, do not that. And we follow the do not, do not, do not, do not. But then there's a bunch of blanks that don't get filled in. And then when the time comes for that do not to be permissible, we lost, stuck, and confused because we've been on the do not, do not, do not the whole time and not educating ourselves along with the do not. So I'm just trying to help you to refrain from throwing the whole marriage away and the whole Christian walk away out of frustration. The main thing we have to realize is that what works for one person may not work for you. You are your own person with your own likes and dislikes, turn ons and turn offs. Your friend, I don't care if she your BFF, her what she like and what her boyfriend, oh, not boyfriend sis, her husband, Okay, it should be her husband. What's going on in their bedroom, it may sound good, tantalizing and fun and everything else, but that does not mean that that's what need to carry on on your side of the pond. <laughs> what you should expect as a newlywed is to learn, okay? Learn your husband's dislikes and likes. Teach your dislikes and likes. 
Communication is not just for outside of the marital bedroom. It is also for the marital bedroom. As awkward as it may be in the beginning, there is work that has to be done. What also helps is taking the pressure out of it. Society likes to tell us and suggest to us that it has to happen this way, right now, it has to be great, it has to measure up to everything that you have ever heard about, or you did not do it right. When that is not the case, you go at your own pace, take it your own speed, learn your partner. It is okay to go slow, to take it at your own speed. Take the pressure out of having this big O, take the pressure out of trying to perform at your highest level when, girl, you don't even know what you're doing. Don't be in there trying to do what your friend told you to do and then looking crazy because he like, wait a minute, what's going on? Like, I'm confused. Your marital sex life will take work. It will take learning. It will take sharing. And it's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect right from the jump. And you should never measure your marital sex life up with someone else's. The next lie of purity is that refraining from sex until marriage will grant you this great reward or some type of immunity. I myself, when I first made the decision to remain a virgin until marriage, I thought that I was gonna be in the VIP section of heaven, okay? And y'all can't sit with me, okay? Cause y'all didn't do what I did or what I wanted to do. <laughs> That's not funny, okay, you're right, my bad. But, <laughs> and I know there are some of you guys that are like me who believe that you are the upper echelon of the Christians, okay? And you sitting on your high horse thinking that you finna be in the express line to get into heaven, that God gonna be like, okay, everybody who waited to have sex over here, Everybody who didn't over there, okay, y'all come on in with your wristband at. There is no express line to get into heaven because you decided to wait for marriage to have sex. You do not get a cookie. You do not pass go. You do not get $200, okay? You are over here with the rest of us. <laughs> and also, if you are coming out of a season of thoughtivity, okay? And you know what I mean. If you're coming out of a season of thoughtivity and think that you about to go on a one year fast from men and that at the end of that year, on day 365, you gonna have a man and y'all gonna get married in two months, that is incorrect as well, okay? You're not getting a reward for remaining pure. And that should not be the goal. The message version in First Thessalonians Four says this, one final word, friends. We ask you, urge is more like it, that you keep on doing what we told you to do to please God. Not in a dogged religious plot, but in a living spirited dance. You know the guidelines we laid out for you from the master Jesus. God wants you to live a pure life. Keep yourselves from sexual promiscuity. Learn to appreciate and give dignity to your body and not abusing it as is so common among those who know nothing of God. So we see here in the word that those who do not know anything of God, those are the ones who lay it low and spread it wide in the words of Miss Evelyn Braxton, okay? But because you know God, you should be living a pure life, treating your body with dignity, being selfish with your cootie cat, in the words of Miss Jocelyn. I'm gonna stop, okay? I'm really about to stop. I know y'all want to manifest everything and not wait on God for nothing, but refraining from having sex until marriage should not be a decision you make to get something from God. It should always be because you know who you serve. You hate what he hates. You love what he loves. And you want to please him instead of pleasing your flesh. Lie number three that this purity culture enforces is that you can't kiss your man before y'all get married. So I have heard here and there that, you know, 
to ensure that you have this great godly relationship to show yourself approved that you must refrain from kissing any contact holding hands anything of the nature you have to not do this in order to have the blessing upon your relationship now there is nothing wrong with not kissing or whatever it is that you want to not do before marriage if you like it i love it but i do believe that it is unhealthy for us to see or hear about how someone carried out their relationship worked out their salvation and then try to make it a formula for us to receive the same results that they did as i stated earlier what works for one person is not going to work for you what works for this couple is not going to work for the next couple and that's okay what we have to realize is that we have the same holy spirit speaking to us that another person may he knows you personally, okay? He know you for your works. And he is always speaking to you. He's always speaking to you about what to do. Don't go there. Don't say that. Don't do this. Keep your hands off of him. Get up out that man bed. And so on and so forth. What we have to stop doing is looking to other people whose life we may admire and try to pull a blueprint or a layout from it to try to get the same result that they did. We have to stop taking pieces from their lives or convictions and try to make them our own. There is no formula. Stop looking for a formula and look to Christ. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He is always speaking to you regarding your life. He will tell you when you're doing too much, okay? He'll tell you. It's just that we have to decide to listen to the Spirit within us and not what looks good over here. Last but definitely not least, the last lie that the purity movement has told me, okay? And I feel the type of way, I ain't even gonna lie. <laughs> I feel a ways. Is that if you have sex before marriage, you're done for, okay? It's no coming back. You ruined your life. You ruined your relationship with God. And you might as well throw the towel in, okay? Because we done with you. Being a virgin really did become something that I strongly identified with. I mean, it was really like a badge of honor for me. So much so that when I did lose it outside of wedlock, I really struggled with it. I felt so ashamed and embarrassed. I felt like I made a really big mistake and that there was no coming back from it when this is also far from the truth what the truth is is that jesus died for your sins even the ones that you purposefully commit for those of us that have had sex out of wedlock what we have to receive is the forgiveness of god romans 8 verses 1 and 2 tells us that so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to christ jesus and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So when we look at this verse, the word condemnation means very strong disapproval. And if we read it again and take out condemnation and put in very strong disapproval, it would read, so now there is no very strong disapproval for those who belong to Christ. Okay, that should have just set somebody free right there. <laughs> okay, I'm about to shout. Although we may have felt short in this area, God is not mad at you, okay? He is not displeased with you. Now, before Jesus died for our sins, sin did have the ability to lead us to death. But because he lives, we are free. And sin no longer has a hold on us. Galatians 5.13 says it this way. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. So as a believer, you are dead to sin. As a believer, you commit works of the flesh or works of the spirit.
The fight is no longer against sin. The fight is to choose in what spirit you want to operate in. Do you want to operate in the spirit or do you want to operate in the flesh? Don't let the cancel culture cancel your salvation, okay? It's not canceled because you made a mistake. God does not revoke your salvation because you had sex before marriage. Again, this does not mean that you go and sin freely. This just means that if you mess up, God is not angry with you. It's also important to know that when we choose to live our lives committing works of the flesh continuously, it can hinder our walk with God. It can hinder our faith. It can hinder our relationship with him because we can start to take on this guilt and shame that's so heavy because we're making bad decisions and we can start to put this wedge in between us and God. No, I said we can put it there because he is always there with open arms. So don't let making a mistake make you feel like God does not want to hear from you, that you have ruined your life, and that you will not have a fruitful future because of it. You can move forward making decisions of quality, renewing your mind by the word of God, and simply turning away from the works of the flesh. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. It helps me out a great deal. Subscribe to the channel. Share the video with anyone you may know. And also leave a comment down below. What lie did I miss? Okay, fill us in. And until next time, you guys.